Anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody else? Going once, going twice. All right. Sold. That is sold, man. That is sold. Nursing home this Friday night, Lord willing. Uh, Kenny's going to be preaching for us, but I encourage you to show up. Good time to be around those folks. It really is. Uh, talk to them. Spend some time with them. They honestly, you think they don't hear or they don't really listen. They are. Mm -hmm. they, I know the power of the Word of God. I just know how the effect it has, and it's quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, man. And I, and I know it does the work when I don't think it will do the work. Or when I don't put the work in I should with prayer and all that, God still shows himself strong. And I, I appreciate that, and I, and I like it, and I'm, I'm glad that door has stayed open. It's been a, well, it's, yeah, we started, what, second Friday of January last year, so it's been a little over a year. Yeah. So good rapport with the folks there, and good testimony with them, and they, they, all kidding aside, they seem to like us, the workers doing all that. And if they didn't, we'd still go. So, I mean, it, it, it's, it makes it a little bit easier when they do. They kind of appreciate you there. So, Amanda loves having us there, and she's one of the primary workers. So, it's good good time, man, to be up there. So, Friday night, 6.30, I'm trying to think of anything else that's going on of major significance. Like, Brother Knowles will be here March 9th. I keep bringing it up, just so you remember. If you are singing, just kind of let me know so I can play it out. I think we've got four... Uh, we have four folks or groups singing and only three nights. I don't know what to do. It's going to mess me right up. <laughs> one a night. That's it. One month. That's it. Perfect in order. No. We'll figure it out. It's not... You want to sing too? Okay. <laughs> no, we don't do that. Go ahead. Yeah, they were out west, man. Yep. I don't know how the, they sound kind of down about all this, so uh, maybe we'll pray for the Lord's open the door there. Mm -hmm. See if I can. Uh... That's not Morrison, that's the other side. Uh, no, so this is, all, this is still Morrison and Nina. Uh, so yep. I did not have your grandma's name for some reason. So I'm going to write that down there, and then I'm going to go right here. It's Nina, you said, correct? So Morrison and Nina. Okay. How, uh, not that it doesn't matter, you can die at any time, but how, how old are they? So they got, they got their four score, man, plus. At least one of them did. Anything past 70 is kind of like, yeah, four score is going to be rough, but you, you, you don't know. So there to pray for them and see the Lord open a the door there. Give you, give you a door of utterance and the right kind of boldness to talk to them about it. Relatives are not, not easy, man, because they've watched you. Now you show up and say, I love Jesus, and they're like, yeah, okay, yeah, right. They, they, it's good to start off and do that. You've got to lay a brick down and set the foundation at some point in time, but they're going to want to watch you first. It's not going to be like, oh, let them, oh yeah, they got saved. Oh, yeah, hey, can I come to church and they get saved too? That's very, very rare. So, But you never know. It's good to see your parents here on Sunday, Mike. Yeah. Real good, man. It's excellent, man. And I know Lauren's uh, sister, Jessica, and also Jezada was here, so praying for salvation, man. Folks, continue to get, get saved, so pretty cool. Amen, amen, amen. All right. You remember Aaron is and his boys, right? I know you do. When they killed the ram of consecration, I know, I remember asked this, I had to go back in the archives, I did ask you this before. Where or what did they do with the blood of that ram of consecration? Haley, give me one, please. Okay, that is correct. Um, Hands, Kenny. Okay. The right thumb. Okay. Yes. And go ahead. I was going to say the right thumb, but I think also the right toe. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's pretty good, man. Seriously, that's really good. Exodus 29 is one of your references. You'll see the other one in Leviticus 8 in a minute. Um, 
Yeah, thank, thank God you're saved the New Testament way. I keep reading this stuff and going, yeah. yeah. Wouldn't it be cool to go back there? No, no, no. Happy now, eternally secure, uh, and, and in the body of Christ, and not have to take my chances, because think of all the stupid stuff you've done since you've been saved. <laughs> yeah, man. Wow. All right, Exodus 29. Haley, I'm going to give you the shot. Can you, uh, well, man, there's a lot here. Can you just get 19 through 21 for now? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow. That's pretty cool right there. Brother Maines hit it right. It's the great toe. You say, what's the big deal about that? Didn't you have a king that cut off the toes of all his enemies while they're at his table? And that's what, how he got recompensed? Great. Adonai Bezek, one of those great names in the Old Testament, man. said, yeah, just as you did it to all those guys where you're sitting under the table, guess what's going to happen to you? We're taking them off on you too. That's just what. You can't beat the King James Bible, man. Let's go watch a horror movie. No, go read Judges. That'd be a good, that would be a good start, man. All right, go to Leviticus 8. Here's your companion uh, to that. Leviticus chapter number 8. Give you a little, little concordance to this particular um, ceremony they did with, with, with the boys. Uh, James, if you could, Leviticus 8, 22 through 24, please. Mm-hmm. And Aaron and his sons laid their hands upon the head of the ram, and he slew it. And Moses took the blood of it and put it up, up and put it upon the thumb of his right hand and upon the great toe of his right. Hand. <laughs> oh, uh, I'm sorry. No, you're Aaron, right ear. Right ear. Yeah. Upon the thumb of his right hand and upon the great toe of his right foot. You, you do a computer's not anatomy, so don't worry about it, man. It's all right. Sorry. That's it, man. And he brought Aaron's sons, and Moses put the blood upon the tip of their right ear, and upon the, thumb, the thumbs of their right hands, and on the great toes of the right feet. And Moses sprinkled the blood upon the altar round about. <laughs> what a great thing that is, man. Yeah, we, we won't have any of those services up here, man. You know, I get the blood out. But you say that's a crazy thing, man. No, what, what's a good spiritual application? Cleanse from all sin, that'd be a good one. What's another one? Be careful, little ears, what you hear. And feet where you go. Hands where you sleep. Little spiritual application there. Go to Psalm 133. He mentions something about oil with those garments, too. I have not checked this out, but I, I believe linen does not absorb. You know, like you take a paper towel or a terry cloth towel and it actually absorbs. I don't know. I haven't checked it out for sure. I, I've heard it a couple times from folks, but you know how preachers, you know, get in the pulpit and, and, and lie. But I mean, no, well, they exactly, because, you know, that, that's good preaching, brother, but it's not good doctrine. Oh, sit down and shut up, man. The best preaching is good doctrine, bro. Sound doctrine right across the plate, belt tie. But anyway, uh, the, the, I've heard it say that linen doesn't absorb, and you say, what's the big deal about that? Well, when you read this, maybe it'll give you a, a, a picture of that, that non-absorbing material. Psalm 133. Uh, Silas, why don't you read the whole chapter? It's, it's going to be a stretch, but go ahead, buddy. So you put that ointment on the head, and what's it do? It just goes down all over your shoulders and your arms and your hands and just keeps flowing down to your midsection and your midriff and your chest and all that and your heart and goes down to your legs and your feet. That's what's oil a picture of in the, in the work. 
a picture of the Spirit of God, man. So the blood on your ear, right ear, and your great toe, your, your right foot, and on your, your thumb, and that, that Holy Ghost, man. It's a lot, lot, a lot of really good similitudes and stuff like that in your old, your old Testament, man. Even though it is real historically, it's real doctrinally. A lot of it's going to happen in the future when God takes up dealings with Israel as a nation again. But there is so much wonderful similitude in the Old Testament. You, you can't beat it, man. Um, all right. Now, just see if you can get some of these. I actually, I got to admit to you, I only got four of them. I had to look them up, even though I preached on them. Give me the gates of Nehemiah 3. Haley, give me one. You're, you're, like, you're trembling right now, but what, give me one gate. Remember how he goes through and he repairs the gates? Because he's obviously Nehemiah is the rebuilding of the wall and uh, Ezra is the rebuilding of the temple. But he's going to... Karen, give me one. One is the water gate. Richard Nixon built that one. Yeah. So the, wa the, water, the water gates, now I'm going to have to do this because you know I'm a little slow, so I'm going to have to check that off my little list here. Okay, water gate is one. Uh, I'm going to give Pauly, I'll give you one, go ahead. You better pick the one I think you're going to pick. <laughs> Bingo. <laughs> if you didn't get Dungate, bro, you're out. That, that's Matthew 18 material right there, kid. Yeah. Or my remains would get it. <laughs> yeah, D Dungate, brother, of course, man. Who doesn't live in the Dungate? I the other ones, that one I got. The dunk, you better believe it. All right, I'm going to go mow, and then I'll go. Haley, you got one of you shaking right now. Like, okay. I'm sorry? The horse, gate. the horse gate. Now, you know what? That'd be a picture of second coming. We preached through these one Sunday, but you guys are KO'd, and I had to raise my voice, and I don't like doing that. Go ahead, Melissa. I, I don't know. Is there? Okay. The fish gate. That would be for what? Going fishing for men. Horse gate. Dung is to get the things out of your life that don't mean anything. I count all things but dung. Yeah. All right, I did have, nope, I've got to go. I'm looking around. Do I see anybody else? Kenny, and then we'll go. Why did I not have that here? I must have missed that. No, I'm serious. That, see, here you go. That's why you got to check yourself, man, before you wreck yourself. Check. Uh, duh. You, yeah, never mind. That's just... Uh, yeah, that's Tard Village, bro. Sorry about that. Good job, Kenny. Way to cheat from the open book quiz. Good job. You say you rescued me. Okay, now we can go to Jennifer, and then we'll go. Valley Gate. Valley Gate. Yep. You're such a valley girl. <laughs> so the va the Valley Gate would be what? Though I walk through the valley, the shadow. He's right with you. Yeah. Brother Maines, go ahead. You had your hand up. East Gate. Oh, you gotta have the. Now what would that be? That's also that's second coming, man. That's the king and the triumphant entry right to the east gate. All right, Estiana. Oh yeah, man. That'd be a little Jeremiah six, the old gate, right? The old paths, not this newfangled foolishness. So uh, there's this is there's a couple of these. This one I definitely missed. There's one more, but it's not Brother Bert. Fountain, Fountain man. But it's how read it is. How does it term or not? Right. Yep, you, you got it. If you go to verse 15 of chapter 3, but the gate of the fountain. So that, that's, what I, that's what I have. If I missed, Kenny, if I missed another one, come on, take over the, you and the pastorette take over, man. Just do, do it up, man. That's it, man. I, that, 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 that's all we got, man. I'm sorry, sir, if you got. I, th I didn't read the whole verse. I just looked at quickly the end, but. Uh, the gate, Miz, Mivcad. I did not put that down. Only, it could be, it's got, it's got a name, but I didn't, yeah, I did not, I didn't put that in there. So I got to throw that message out and retype it. I'll have to check with Dr. Peacock, see if I get a good grade on that one. No, I did not have, but that, that's, those are all real good, real good similitudes to preach out of, man. Real good. I'm sorry? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, East, East Gate. Yeah, man, you can't beat the East Gate. Uh, speaking of that, go over to Ezekiel. Just give you a quick cross reference on Ezekiel, please. We called him Zeke when we went to school with him. Uh, Deb Cox, y'all, can you get Ezekiel 44, 1, 2, and 3? And, and 4, just to mix one in there. 
they brought me back the way of the gate of the outer sanctuary, which looked toward the east, and it was shut. Then said the Lord unto me, This gate shall be shut, it shall not be opened, and no man shall enter in by it, because the Lord, the God of Israel, <laughs> Yeah, man. It is for the prince, the prince who shall sit in it to eat bread before the Lord, who shall enter by the way of the porch of that gate, who shall go out by the way of the same. <laughs> then brought he me the way of the north gate before the house, mm -hmm. and I looked, and behold, the glory of the Lord filled the house of the Lord, and I fell on my face. That's pretty cool. The north gate. What did it say about the north gate? The glory of the Lord? What do we know about Psalm 75? For promotion cometh neither from the east nor from the left nor the south, but God is a judge. So God lives in the north. You know that from uh, Psalm 48 as well and Isaiah 14. Yeah, God, God's throne and God's the third. It's direct. It's true north, man. Pretty neat. But the, that's where the glory of the Lord is in the north gate. That's just cool stuff in your old, your old, your old King James Bible where the knucklehead you say, yeah, King Jimmy Bible. I do not want to give an answer for that. I've got a lot of stuff to answer for, but that one... Uh, we're not mocking this book, man. You mock it all. I'm not, I'm not doing it, man. And yeah, it's not good. All right. Quick one. Verses with or on in Christ. Verses on or with in Christ. Specifically those two words, please. Haley, fire away. Came to play tonight. Yep. That's pretty cool. I, I need to say this real quick because I'm Paul only, and uh, Brother Bert's over here. We know what he, he's in hyperspace, which is cool. <laughs> Do you know that in Christ occurs once in Acts, two times in Peter, and every other time it's in the Pauline epistles? There's something unique about your standing once you get saved. Go ahead, somebody fire away. Somebody got one? Uh, Deb, then Bert. Go ahead, please. Amen. In our Lord Jesus, so you got extra credit for in our Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> I, I hear you going above and beyond as usual. Okay, <laughs> now for a downtrodden, Brother Burt, go ahead. Bring. Oh, Sean Calvin showed up. Oh no. Go. <laughs> I I knew it was coming. The hard shell bat, but he's here, man. Go ahead. <laughs> Mm -hmm. heavenly places in Christ, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. Yeah, we're not going to go, we're going to repeat that, but he didn't choose you, choose you in Christ Jesus for the foundation of the world. Read the whole context, right. please. Right. Uh, you know, well, never mind, I got to, yeah, I got to shut that down. That's, that's going to go into Tulip Village in two seconds. <laughs> uh, I know, I know I got you guys over here. Uh, give me two seconds. You don't have to put your hands down, I'll deject it and all that. Okay, <laughs> Kenny, go ahead, please, and then we'll go back over. First Peter three sixteen, <laughs> having a good conscience that whereas they speak evil of you as evildoers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse you, accuse your good conversation in Christ. Yeah, that's one of the two times that happens in Peter. All right, now we go back on this. Oh, Estiana, Estiana, she gave Kenny a look when he raised. He's like, and I call him, and she's like, <laughs> mm, go ahead. Yep, go ahead, please. Now, I will say this because now I'm thinking about tulips. <laughs> did you just read that? Did you just read that right there? He endures all things for who? Why? So they can get saved like he got saved. So who's the elect? The Israelites. 
because he's from the tribe of Benjamin, the stock of Israel, circumcised the eighth day, all those things. But he's now in Christ, and he wants to see the elect getting Christ like he did by grace through faith. Bible with Bible will always clear up the craziness of what's going on, man. Calvinist. Oh, what? Oh, wow. If you've got to call yourself by another guy's name, get out of here. You want to be called a Christian because I'm in Christ and I walk after Christ. Unbelievable. All right, somebody on this side, go ahead, Jennifer. And I, I got you, Chuck. Don't worry, man. No, you can go verse 5, because we have a colon there. To whom we gave place by subjection, no, not for an hour, that the truth of the gospel might be changed. It's kind of suspicious you picked a verse with false brethren in it, Jennifer. I'm just saying, man. I'm, kind of, I'm, kind of, I'm feeling the heat right now. It's kind of... All right, Jonathan, you had your hand up as well. Might as well just murderers row, get rid of the whole thing going. Yep. Guys are expanding it into other words, but don't take instruction well. That's all right. I want in Christ. Haley's like, I want to just go off the wall right now. All right, Chuck, please. Yep. Amen. Yep. That's pretty cool, right there. No, no, you're good, man. That's it. That's all we need, man. Don't get rambunctious, man. <laughs> okay. Well, it's not my favorite, so you ain't gonna read it. <laughs> Go, Mike, in the back, and then we'll work my way up. Uh, yep. I call him. Amen. That's a good one right there. So that's a real good one, man. Three, four, ten is a real good one. All right, uh, Mo, Paul. James. Uh, Romans 3, 23. Yep. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, but being justified freely by His grace is redemption that is in Christ Jesus. That'd be kind of an important one. Redemption in Christ Jesus. Paulie, go ahead, please. Uh, 1 Corinthians 15. I kind of have to do 16 through 19. Oh, yeah. I don't have to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised? Christ is not raised, your faith is in vain. You're, uh, you are yet in your sins. Then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most <laughs> Yeah, man. Okay, so what is Bible salvation? You're either in Christ or you're in your sins. That That's it. That's as plain as you can get. You're either going to die in Christ or you're going to die in your sins. End of story. The choice is yours. James, go ahead, please. Uh, also, 1 Corinthians 15, uh, 22. Yep. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all shall be made alive. And that's a huge one. That one with Matthew 1 and Genesis 5, because nobody dies in Matthew 1's genealogy. Everybody dies in Adam's genealogy in, Ma in uh, Genesis 5. Now, I know the folks in Matthew 1 died, but... In Christ, you don't really die. In fact, you have eternal life and everlasting life. Silas, go ahead, please. Ephesians 2.10. Yep. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. How come nobody quotes that one after they read 2, 8, and 9? You're, 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 you're saved by grace through faith in 8 and 9. And now, and not, not of yourselves, it's not of works. But then when you get saved, it's like you stop working for the Lord. Well, you did so much before you got saved to prove you were worthy through your works. And then when you get saved, nah, I'm not doing anything. I'm just going to chill. Well, you can. That's your choice. But, wow. Let's give an account, man. Give an account. Anybody else? Brother Mains, then we'll go. Go ahead. 2 Timothy 3.15. Yep. Yes, sir. In that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise on a salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Yeah, man. Amen. 
So the Holy Scriptures make you wise unto salvation, not into salvation. You still have to make a decision once you hear the Holy Scriptures whether or not you're going to take the free gift of eternal life. They make you wise unto salvation. Where? In Christ Jesus. This weird thing. I, I just can't get that tulip thing out of my mind right now, man. God pick. So if you think or believe because you take some random verses out of Romans 9 and, 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 and one in Acts and 2 Thessalonians, you, and you, don't, you don't even know what those mean. You have no idea because you don't rightly divide your Bible. You don't dispensationalize things correctly and properly through the Holy Ghost because nobody's ever taught you that had any bearing of teaching themselves. And if you really think that God picked people to be saved, don't you by logical thinking have to say the ones He didn't pick, He picked for hell? How come they don't bring that up? It's only, oh, no, you're, you're elect, you're picked, you're, you're, you're selected, you're chosen. Well, then by default, stupid, because that's what you are, you're stupid. To think that God handpicked, well, obviously he didn't pick, that means he picked them to go to hell. Well, no, 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 I don't know anything. That's what it means. And could you tell me what that number is? Well, nobody knows that. Oh, okay, okay. Jesus didn't pick uh, 12 and a half. He came down from a whole night in prayer and picked 12, knowing one was a devil. Have I not chosen you 12? I brought that up to a, somebody in the area that's a Calvinist. And, he go, and I said, wow, if you trust God's choosing, he's not really good at choosing, is he? <gasps> you, you need to watch yourself. I said, no, no, come on, man, let's look at the, let's look at the word in the, in the, and let's look at the Bible verses. He chose one that was a devil. Do you trust Jesus Christ's decision-making? <gasps> I wouldn't say that. Well, you don't have to say it. I just did. <laughs> choosing in the King James Bible is for service, not salvation. It's for God to use you as a vessel, even if you're Pharaoh. You don't think he picked Nebuchadnezzar and said, this is my, I, you know what, I like him right now. That's, yeah, yeah, he's called his faithful servant over in Je uh, Jeremiah 25. He's my, excuse me, he's my servant. Yeah, man, this is crazy. Picking you for salvation, man. Anyway, sorry. What's Tulip real quick? Let's just do it real quick. What's T? I know, brother. I know you're freaking out right now. Go ahead. I, uh, I think Deborah <laughs> had her hand up. Go ahead, Deb. <laughs> Never has that meant more than I do. And you got the totally depraved kid from New Britain. To so total. De if you don't know what this means, total depravity. Okay. If you don't know what that means, I know we talked about. We're going to the board. We're going to the board real quick. This stuff will kill your church debtor in graveyard at 2 in the morning, man. Yeah. It absolutely 100% will. Yes, I'm going to break something. <laughs> Gene Kim's not here for a little while, so I get to use my markers up here, man. The secret Gene. This is the Gene. This is like the Ark of the Covenant for Gene Kim. <laughs> He's like, oh. And then, of course, the thing comes out and melts them to nothing. So, I mean, if you watch movies, I know we don't watch movies. I'm just saying, man. So, yeah, films. So, we're going to do this one more time. What T equals what? Tool depravity. So, we're going to write this right here. Interesting that it's five. What's five the number of in the King James Bible? Probably just a coincidence. Yeah, <laughs> I've heard that enough too, man. Choke a horse, man. Five point Calvinism. Don't care what you think about this either out in YouTube land. You already could probably figure that out a long time ago. All right, what's you stand for? And don't say a female sheep, or I'll lose my mind. What's you stand for? Go ahead. Unconditional election. I don't know why I keep doing this stuff, man, but you need to teach through this stuff, man. Unconditional election. We'll get a very brief look at this in a second here. So much for getting through the verses tonight, but we got some. Okay. All right, Mike, what is L? Uh, limited atonement. Cold star for that boy right there, man. I'm serious, man. That's pretty good right there. Mike would even say for like 15 minutes, you know, this stuff. That's pretty cool, man. <laughs> Well, at least some at least somebody's listening in the congregation, Paulie. <laughs> I, 
Can't prove it. Just saying. <laughs> just, just saying. Can't prove it. Just saying. All right. What is? I, all right. Uh, I had one. Who else we got? Haley, you want to give it to me? Okay, irresistible grace. You're reading from your Bible. Where you got those written down, Haley? I know. I would write. I, I do. Where is it? Acts seven, or in the back of there. Good. <laughs> and then finally, won't we believe in this one, brother? <laughs> okay, you don't even you don't even know what you're talking about, man. Anybody know what the, the, the P stands for? Megan, you got it? Perseverance of the saints, or some people will say preservation of the saints. Basically, if you really look at that tenet, they'll say, well, that's the one that kind of matches the Bible. No, no, you got to read what, that's almost like enduring to the end, that you'll keep on keeping on. I don't have to endure to the end. He endured to the end for me. Crazy stuff, man. We're jiggling up here. Kenny, get up here and hold. <laughs> so that's it in a nutshell. <laughs> Just, Bob, you're alive. Good, man. Seriously. I, was, I thought the cold air was kind of putting you in deep freeze, man, but you, you giggled, man, so you, you're here, man. Okay, so how do you, count, how do you counteract this? Okay, first of all, somebody explain to me what total depravity means in their, in their verbiage. Somebody tell me what total depravity It's good to know what it stands for, but if some, and I'm, I'm not saying engage these people because they want to get you into a scholarly debate with you. And they probably read more books than you, but I guarantee you haven't, they haven't read that book more than you have. They read books about the book. They read authors about the author, but they won't read it themselves. Go ahead, James, you want to take a shot at what? What does total depravity mean? You're so far gone that you, you, you can't make a free will choice on your own. You can't come to God. Uh, so basically this is, I'll tell you square up, they believe you get regenerated to get regenerated. They, in other words, God just, he just imposes himself on you and basically regenerates you so you can make the right decision. That, that's where that comes from. Chuck, you have a comment or... Good. They're rare around here, actually, but you run into enough of them to make, you, make your skin crawl. But you know what it really does for me personally? I've said this a million times, and I hope you get it, get it through your heart. It ought to drive you back to your Bible. You ought, when you get confronted with Jehovah's Witnesses, or Satan's Witnesses, and all this foolishness, it go back to your Bible, man. And you know what? If anything you get out of it, it strengthens your walk with Jesus Christ. Not the Baptist doctrine or Dr. Ruckman's uh, doctrine, James. I know, nobody's doc what do you believe about your Savior according to that Bible, man? And it's, it's actually, it's good to, but, you know, it's good to actually, when you, when you witness enough people, you're going to run to somebody that believes in tongue speaking and, and all this uh, other stuff. And bye, Megan. Don't be sneaking out. We know you're leaving. <laughs> but so total depravity is you're just so far wicked, gone, unregenerate, and that you can't make a decision. How do we know that's. Not true. Anybody have a Bible verse or anything for that? Or a thought on that? You're, you're so far gone that you just can't make a, a decision. You can't, you can't do anything. Oh, I'm just so, I'm so, I'm lower than anything in the ocean, man. And Go ahead. Any, any one of those verses. Oh, none of us are deserving, brother. No kidding. No kidding. The fact on Sunday when we went through it, why does God even make account of us or take account of us? Why would he even spend a second with us? Why did he care from glory to come down here and so love the world? Why? Why did he commend his... Okay, okay how about this one? God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were what? You're just so wicked and filthy, I just can't... No, no there's no... There's no you, but let, let, me, let me touch you first with the Holy Ghost. And then, uh, how about this... And as many as re 
Just, I mean, I'm not trying to put you on the spot, but think this stuff. Just because somebody comes at you with a Bible verse, don't get all freaked out about it. It might be a Bible verse. Is it rightly divided? Who's, some rules about Bible study. Who is it talking to? And it's actually just rolling into tonight a little bit. Jew, Gentile, Church of God. Old Testament, New Testament, salvation by grace through faith, gospel of grace of God, tribulation, millennial eternity. What does it fit into? Don't get wigged out, man. But also don't get to a point of debating. Debating in your King James Bible is only good one time. Debate thy cause with thy neighbor himself. People like, you know, debating is bad in Romans. I, was like, oh, I like to debate. Well, okay, so doesn't the devil. Have a good time with that. Now, is there a time when somebody's in a crowd trying to persuade men the other way? Yeah, you may need to stand up and say, that's wrong, that's satanic. Like the guy across the street from Harry and I that time where it took about seven minutes of preaching, and he rapped and he goes, you're not very loving. Thank you. That's mean. That's Elijah. That's John the Baptist. Get out of here. That's our corner for Jesus Christ. And any other corner I show up on. <laughs> but that one. With your little suit and your, your whatever. Oh, don't get me going, man. Anyway, where do you get your illustrations from? Real life. Real life. Not a book on the shelf. Real life. The book and a little bit of just trying to do something for Jesus Christ. Believe me, I'm a loser. That's for sure. So, total depravity, you got a bunch of verses on that. You got you had John, uh, what'd you have? You got John 1, 12. Jennifer, you had uh, uh, Romans, what, 10, 13, 10, 13 right? Correct, uh, for whosoever came to the Lord. Uh, what, else did we, uh, what else do we have on that one? Revelation 2.17. The voice has spoken. Go ahead, Brother Burke. <laughs> the Spirit and the Bride say come, right? Something like that? The Spirit, the spirit and the Bride say come, and let him that heareth say come. And let him that is a thirst come, and whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. Why bother inviting them if they're no good and they're just so low and, you know, you're just, a, you're just a bucket of rusty iron and all, so you're just a loser and everything. Yeah, you are a loser, but the God of glory says, I died for you and rose again the third day. Now just take what I told you to do and get saved. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's crazy, man. I can't believe we're doing this again on Wednesday night. But we won't be getting through soul winning in the next year or two, but that's okay. <laughs> unconditional election. Anybody want to give, give a shot at that one? What, is, what does unconditional... Like, you can kind of, I'm not, not trying to be sorry, but you can kind of pick it out by the first word and then... From there, uh, we're going to have a combo here. Go ahead. But you have no choice that you're chosen. Y yeah, yeah, and that it's going to go with the next one, but Deb? You were chosen before time again. You were going to be chosen on it's, it's unconditional. Okay, so question for you. Uh, wasn't there a man in Acts? His name's Cornelius. And God looked down and said, in fact, he sent an angel down and said, we've watched you give alms and we've heard your prayers. Uh, we're going to get somebody to tell you about Jesus Christ. He's a Gentile. Where are you going to get that from, man? Unconditional election means you, you, you're, you're, you've been picked. You're picked. That's it. It's going to tie in the next one. So, well, what do you know about that one? You can, a lot of these verses are going to have crossover. Whosoever will. The Lord, I mean, go ahead, Brother Bert, you got, you got one? Yeah. Uh, I was just thinking of, of who the elect are, the only way we're elect is in Christ. Go to Isaiah 42, please. Somebody, somebody get Isaiah 42, 1. I know there's other verses, but can somebody read Isaiah 42, uh, 1, please, for me? Isaiah 42. I, I, I know it's getting a little, going a little crazy, but that's all right. We've got a few more minutes. Who is the elect, number one? Je Jesus Christ, my servant. He shall bring forth. Okay, number one, it's, it's Jesus Christ. Now go over to somebody to get Matthew 24. Uh, I might need some help on the verse. Uh, 24, 20, for the elect's sakes, those days shall be shortened. Is that the verse? I don't know if it's 22, but go ahead. Somebody, if somebody's got that. Kenny, if you got it, fire away. I, I know it's 24. I just don't have the specific reference right now. It might be 22. And except those days should be shortened, there shall no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Okay. Now, specifically, let, let's see. Let's even pare this down a little more than that. It's it, it's it's it, well. Give me a somebody. Give me the second. Essie, I think you read it. Second Timothy was it? Second Timothy 2:10. 
but yet for the elect's sake, was it 2 Timothy 2.10? So can you get that real quick? I'll write that down. I think it was 2.10. 2 Timothy 2.10, therefore endure all things for the elect's sake, that they may also obtain salvation, which is in Christ Jesus with the present glory. Right. So you have the nation of Israel, elect. Jesus Christ, elect. Okay? Um, let's get more specific. What about those guys called the male virgins in, in, in the tribulation period? Oh, yeah, my father's name in their forehead. That ties that stuff right into Matthew 24 and over Mark 13. Also, you're talking about the 144,000 out of that nation of Israel. Now, some, now, just bear with me for a minute. Somebody show me where we're the elect today. You won't, you won't find very many of them, but they're in there. Anybody have a verse where we, as New Testament saved people? Brother Burke, go ahead if you're... I'm, hold on, man. I see. I'm sorry? Yep. yep, go ahead. I was thinking of another one, too, real quick. Go ahead. Knowing, brother, beloved, your, are your election of God. That is 1-4, right, or 1-3? One, 1-4. One, First Thessalonians. Okay, um, there's one I'm thinking of over specifically. Um, how about uh, 1 Peter 1? Anybody, anybody got, Brother Mains, you got that one? 1 Peter chapter number 1. Peter 1 that's all I have. Yep, go ahead. Fire away. Just read, you can, you can read, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, 1 and 2. 1 Peter 1, 1 and 2. Go ahead when you get there. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, says, strangers scattered uh, throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit of God, unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, grace unto you and peace be multiplied. That's pretty cool. That is driving me insane. <laughs> Jonathan, get up here with your power tools. I'm sorry, sir? I think you can tighten the sides. <laughs> get, give, me, give me one. Go to Romans 8. This is the one I was kind of leaning towards. Romans, I think it's Romans 8, right? Uh, is that the one I'm... Uh, yeah, there, there is. I'm, I'm, I'm going to hit. I'm going to hit that one in a second. Um, can somebody read? Read somebody read uh, 30, 31, 32, and thirty-three, please, of Romans eight. What shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not His own Son, but delivered Him up for us all, how shall we not? Okay, now even in that passage, who can lay anything to the charge of Jesus Christ? But if I'm in Christ, I am sinless. Who can lay anything to my charge? In Christ, you can't. It all goes back to Jesus Christ. Every bit of it. Uh, keep on, uh, brother Paul. You got one, man. Titus one one. Did you read that? Uh, that's uh, elect as well, right? Yeah. Paul, a servant of God, an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect. God's elect. Actually, let me get that up here. I'm sorry. That's uh, that's that's my fault. That's Titus. I knew that one too, but that's good. That's good pull right there, Paul. Yeah, I I know we've gone over a little bit, but that so Titus one one and. I mean, the elect is Jesus Christ. It's also 144,000 tribulation male Jews. It's also Israel as a nation. But it also, if I'm in Christ, that's the only title that that's the only time a title gets applied to me. But this unconditional election. So, oh man. All right, back to Romans eight for a second. I know we're doing this. We got some time, man. Romans eight. Go to Romans eight. You know, the, you know the four times that this is mentioned in the King James Bible, and people love to get all over this. Um, 
Karen, I need you to read Romans 8, 28, 29, and 30, please. Okay, that was Romans, I should have just have read the whole, Romans 8, and that was uh, 28 to which one I have? Through 30, right, Karen? Why did I bring you there? What's the word that popped up a couple times there? It's like Devin and, and Melissa said, man, M Melissa, Mo, that you, you, you're, you're locked in, bro. You, you, you're not getting out of it. You have, no, you, the only time your destination is set is when you're in Christ. That's the only time. And you know what your predestination is in Romans 8? To be conformed to the image of Jesus. How can you be conformed to His image when you're not saved? And how do you get saved? By making a decision. Uh, okay. Man, there's just so much in here. I could, you could put a thousand verses. Over. Somebody, uh, somebody get back to give me the references if they could, please, in Ephesians 1 for predestination. It only occurs four times, the terminology. One's in Romans 8. Deb, you got it in Ephesians 1, please? Yep. Verse 5, also in verse 4, according to he has chosen us in him before the salvation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. Let, let me ask you a question. When you read, just read that, he predestinated you, first of all, to be holy and without what? Well, how, how can you be that when you're not in Christ? What happened when the first man and the first female, what happened to them in the garden if they were, if they were in the image of God, which they were, what happened when they sinned? They lost what? The image of God. You don't get that back until Jesus Christ in the New Testament. That's clear. So if God picked you before the foundation of the world, and you came in born of a woman, which says, and in sin did my mother, you know, uh, I, behold, I was shaped in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. She didn't conceive you as a child of God. She conceived you as a child of the devil. Your father is Adam. You're a sinner by birth and a sinner by choice. So how, how does that work out, man, where God chose you? Come on, man. You're not, you're not even thinking. You're not, you're not even thinking, man. There's, there's, so, there's so many verses on this. This is predestination over here. This is a pre. None of that, none of that predestination foolishness, nothing that Deb read or, or uh, uh, Karen read had anything to do with salvation. It was conformed to the image of Jesus Christ and adoption. Do you know right now you've been adopted but the adoption papers haven't gone through yet? Why? You're still here. Romans 8 says the adoption uh, to it, uh, the redemption to wit, the adoption, uh, no, I'm going to get it wrong, uh, to wit, the redemption of the body, adoption first. You know why the adoption is not complete yet? Because your father hasn't come and picked you up from the orphanage. Well, I don't know what you are doing or what, <laughs> what, kind, of, what kind of prescriptions are going on, but you, we got to stop it, okay? If it's, if it's a nap, we got to stop, man. There's so many verses on this, man. Uh, I don't how about, uh, uh, how about the Lord is not willing that he should perish? Yeah. What's that, 2 Peter 3, 9? 3, 8 or 9? Is that 2 Peter 3, 8 or 9? 9. Thank you. 2 Peter 3, 9. Uh, what's the one in 1 Timothy 2? Is it two, what, 2, 4 is the one I'm thinking of. He will, ha he will have all men to be saved. All men. Not the elect. Well, like... Oh, never mind. Like the, like the idiot said up the road. I don't care what you're saying. If you say he's my brother in Christ, but you're still an idiot, man. And you're easily swayed. I feel sorry for you. I feel sorry. You know, I'm all mad at your teachers. It's stupid, man. You'd be easily swayed by that foolishness. Well, I said, well, he, he's not willing to answer your Well, any, the elect. So you just change. Now I know why you use other Bible versions. So you just change what the Word of God said. So no wonder you don't have a final authority in your life. Mean, 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 I know. This stuff will kill your church, boy. So if you're a hyper dispen other than if you're a, if you're if you're if you're get out.
get up. Our doctrinal statement is back there for a reason. I was telling that, I don't know who I was, who was I telling that to? Oh, it's uh, to the folks at Discipleship last night. That You need to get a copy of that doctrinal statement. You need to know what I believe from that Bible and what we believe is the church. Now, if you don't know it or disagree with it because you have not been taught it, that's different. But if you're coming in here and you're a hyper anything, or you think you're going through the tribulation period, I will sniff that out because God's going to let me sniff it out, and you will be out of here in a heartbeat. We need to love everybody. No, get out. Because you'll that'll this congregation will get torn up by that foolishness. Just like you'll get torn up with bitterness and anger and all that stuff. But that doctrine stuff, man, it gets through here, the whisper, and let me teach you. I found verses that not even God knows. And you know, you know, I found doctrine that not, you know, Michael Eric Angel that went, nobody knows. Come on, man, get out of here. Mike, yes. Did we get the one in Titus two, eleven? For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared unto how many men? Amen. Thank you, that's a good pull. It's a big night, Mike. <laughs> now, is that first Titus or second Titus? <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna. Yeah, that's it. Get underneath that cover, those covers, buddy. I don't, we just ran out. We ran out of space, but unconditional election. <laughs> what is man that thou art mindful of? The son of man that thou visitest him. For thou made him a little lower than the angels and is crowned with honor and glory. Who are, you? Who are you? You're on the backside of a dust ball on the backside of his heel when he walks through heaven and makes dust. You say, where do you get that from? Nahum, the clouds of the dust of his feet. He walks through heaven and he kicks up dust and he goes, yeah, let, me, let, me make a man, let me make a man out of that. Yeah. All right, so we're having a good time right now. Uh, limited atonement. Anybody want to tell me what the limited atonement is? This is probably this is the one that ticks me off more than all of them. This one gets me absolutely lit. L should be for livid, livid atonement. What's, what's L stand for? I mean, what would, how would you explain or what does it stand for? Go ahead, Estiana. Christ's blood only for the elect. Christ's blood's only for the elect. <laughs> Anybody got a couple verses on that, man? You can maybe give one, Brother Burt. You got one? Go ahead, please. Shot two, two. Oh man! Wow, wow, this is awesome, man. Yeah, I know. Honestly, we have to shut the doors, man. You have to explain. I already went to Revelation twenty-two. I know. I know. That was just the appetizer. That was the appetizer. That was that was that was that was a big. Big. That's right, brother. You. You shut. You shut down. You shut down Adonai Bezek up in the front row, man. <laughs> That's awesome, man. And gives the propitiation for our sins, not for ours only, but also for the sins of the world. Oh, the sins of how many? Oh, just the elect, brother. Oh, changing the word of God again, Satan. Yep. Satan. Yep. That's what Satan does. Change the word of God for his own design. Don't don't you give me that junk, man. I'm fully aware of what you do. I don't like reading vile verses about me either, but I'm not going to change them. It says what it says, how it says it, where it says it. End of story. Go ahead, Mo. You got one? Yeah, Romans 10, 9, 10, and also 13. Yep. I mean, it's, I, I understand what you're saying, but it, think more. It's limited atonement. I know it's for everybody who's sorry, but the limited atonement is specific to the blood, that the blood is for the elect. So, okay, go ahead, because you're weeping right now, so I don't want you to... <laughs> Jen hey, Jennifer Benoit already had that. <laughs> but I mean, yeah, who so yeah, man. You can use any of these verses to say, you're just you're you're out of your mind. And like I said, you've heard me say it before, there there's no Calvinist I've ever met where their whole family wasn't elect, their kids weren't elect, and their grandchildren's grandchildren, grandchildren are all elect. You're wild, man. But I like the sins of the whole world, man. You know, you know what happens? They get to these passages in Matthew stuff where it says, well, you know, many are called, but few are chosen. What's that? That's, that's kingdom stuff. You've got to read that all through, man. But, and again, not chosen for salvation. You've got to understand New Testament salvation has nothing to do with you being chosen for service or being chosen, to be, uh, chosen uh, by the Lord to be used in service. Like I mentioned, Pharaoh. That's stupid, man. But anyway, that's, that's, that'll, take care of the, that'll take care of the blood for now. But the, listen, when the Bible says many or few, 
don't, don't the disciples ask the question, are, are there few that be saved? And he says, well, the things of man are uh, impossible, not with God. Nothing's impossible with God. It's whosoever will. It's whosoever will. What's my job? Plant and water, plant and water, plant and water, plant and water. Well, how do you know if you come across the elect? I don't know. Plant and water, plant and water, plant and water. When Paul and those, let me ask you a question. Why did Paul and those boys go everywhere preaching to everybody, everything, every creature, every town they went to? Oh, just by chance they scatter, shotgun, and hit the elect? What's wrong with you, man, anyway? You're weird. You're weird. Go ahead, Jennifer. Yes? 1 Corinthians 6, 11. Yep. And such were some of you. you. But ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Right. How about Revelation? He's washed us in his, in his, in his blood. The blood, the, what, uh, my point I was trying to make about the many and the few and all stuff that you use, listen, it's for all, but who takes it? Many. It's for all, but maybe just a few in Vernon. It's for everybody, but maybe 50 in Willington. It's, it's available to whosoever. You could spread, the, real quick, and I know Mo, you got your hand up, man, but I, and we got to get going. When, when the Lord sends those boys out in that kingdom parable about inviting people to a wedding, what do some of those people say? We're not going. And then he says, go out on the highways and hedges, compel them to come into my house, maybe full. Well, Lord, you know what? Then they're out. Wasn't there some of the elect in that crowd? Crazy, man. They don't even think, they don't even think it through. In, in limited atonement, yeah, the blood. That stuff is so satanic, man. You're starting to talk about the blood of Jesus Christ, man. That's fighting stuff. And that King James Bible, too, by the way. All right, quick. Well, he's telling me not to do this one, so I'm blowing it. But second, or first Timothy 2, uh, 3, 4. Well, that's, yeah, we got that one, Mo. Right here. 2, 4. Uh, he, who will have all men to be saved and come to knowledge of the truth. For there's one God, one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Who gave, but verse 6 says, who gave himself a what? For all. But few or many take it. Not all take it. Paul, go quick, man, because i got to get through the next two. Yep. Irresistible grace. Just give me a one-liner. You know what the answer to this one is. Ir irresistible grace is... You cannot fight or resist against God. He just, he basically just, you know, like Benny Hinn with his Nehru jacket knocks down 100,000 people in, the, in a South African concert hall. Yeah, or, or this one where he goes, I'm like, what did you eat, Genoa salami, a horseradish, and something else? I mean, honestly, these clowns take their coat off and breathe on people, and people are falling down. Of course, they fall backwards like Judas. But nobody pays attention to that foolishness. A servant of God and a, the priest of God, and Moses, they all fall forward. These idiots are falling backwards. Got to have somebody with a blanket to cover up the lady because she's, uh, she's now uh, unclean because of the way she looks with a dress. I'm not being filthy or perverse, but that's the stupidity that goes on. And they, that's God's Holy Ghost. No, it's, not, it's a ghost, but it's not a Holy Ghost. Right. Wild stuff, man. But what irresistible grace is that you, you know what? You, you can't escape it. God will track you down. and God, you, you, can never, you can't resist God's grace. So somebody give me the, the, the ultimate verse on that. Somebody, please. Anybody? Mike, you got it? Give it a shot. I don't have it, but it's the one where the world knew him not. Like he came into the world. No, that's, there's a specific, it's, it's, okay, it's, Mike, Mike, no, you're, you're, you're still under the wing. You're okay. Man. <laughs> but where, where's that verse at? Go ahead. I don't have a reference, but was it Felix said almost got persuaded to be a Christian? Agrippa, but almost a persuasive. But there's a, you're, 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 you're like, you know, you're like Bugs Bunny, warm dock, warm, not nah, cold dock, no cold dock, but you're, you're, you're hitting it, but there's like actually a specific verse that's, a, go ahead, Polly, go ahead, while you're flipping and freaking out, go ahead. That's the one. Go ahead, please read it. You do always resist the Holy Ghost. Are, is, are you in an ESL class, English is a second language? Was that pretty clear with a limited amount of syllables? Yeah, this does tick me off because you're impacting people's eternal lives. 
and you'll kill people from going out witnessing. Now, some of them will say, well, we go out and witness just in case, you know, I'll run across one of the elect. Wow, that's a great approach. Uh, most of them will not witness at all. If you've been around Calvinists or Calvinists in the church, they won't door knock, they won't street, they won't do anything because if they're going to get saved, they're going to get saved. So you're disobedient to Almighty God by not going out. Okay, okay. The ministry of reconciliation he gave you with the word of reconciliation he gave you, but you're not going to go do what he told you to do? Yeah, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm over that, man. Okay, perseverance of the saints. Now, I already gave you a little hint on that, how they teach it. I know I'm eternally secure, but I'm only eter eternally secure because of Jesus Christ. So just give me a couple of verses on eternal security. But they actually, they take it a different way, endure, that you have to endure. You have to make it through, man. Go ahead. James, 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 bingo. So what I could really write up here is this, to solve it all. <laughs> That's it. I'm not saying, crack baby. With all due respect to, unfortunately, those kids that get involved in that. You're a crack baby if you believe this. Oh, you're mean. No, I'm exactly like John the Baptist or Jesus Christ or Paul or anybody else who said, shut your mouth and get out of the pulpit and stop teaching people false doctrine. Shut your yap and get out of the pulpit. Go do something else with your life. But don't, don't affect and mess people's lives. So, pers so perseverance of the saints is, yeah, well, yeah, well, you're preserved. Yeah, but, you know, you got to kind of hang on, you know, even though you're picked and chosen and all that stuff. And you're this stuff goes back to Augustine, by the way. A Roman Catholic monk. It's Augustinianism is where Calvinists, uh, Calvinists really come from. And before that, the fatalists in the Greek, the lost Greek philosopher world. That's where this junk actually has its origins from. Go do some reading, man. Check it out. It's crazy. So, I mean, we know we're eternal secure. Just give me a couple of verses on eternal security. We'll pray. We'll get out of here. Ephesians 1, 13. That would be a good one, Kenny. Yep. Gospel of your salvation, in whom also after you believed, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Done deal. Over. Estiana, go ahead. Romans 8, 38. Yeah, we yeah, have, man. <laughs> go ahead. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor death nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. See, they'll say, well, 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 aren't you a one-pointer? No, I'm a, I'm a no point. I'm a doe. I have no points. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, a no, I'm a no point buck. How does that sound? Stinking unbelievable, man. Well, oh, no, don't we agree on one thing? No, we do not. Little leaven leaven with the whole lump. See you later. And don't send your little comments on YouTube and put your stuff down there. You don't know anything about Romans 9. You don't know anything about Mark. You don't know anything about anything when you come up with your little verses. Because I guarantee you, and you're just going to sound horrible, I, this isn't, I'm in the flesh now, you have not studied this like I have. You're not even close. Well, you're in the flesh right now. Well, so aren't you 95% of your life, so don't worry about it. That's the problem. Well, I know what, you don't know what James says. I'll never forget Dr. Rogan saying, he's, well, you know what Brother Rogan said, you don't know what James, James 2 says, have a seat. <laughs> Awesome, man. Yeah, I'm channeling it right now. I might the witch at Endor or something like that. <laughs> give me, give me one more. Crazy. Well, you know Pharaoh. He hardened his heart, you know, and God hardened his heart. And yeah. Did you read the whole story about Pharaoh? Have you read all of that where he hardened his heart too? And when's the last time you found out that Pharaoh was a saved man or a lost man? He's in Exodus. But because you don't rightly divide, you don't even know the gospels are different. Salvation's different. The ages are different. You get away from rightly dividing the word of truth, you're hosed. You're hosed. Go ahead, Jennifer. Just give me one because Paul is freaking out. That would be. You're sitting, watch out, Bert's a couple <laughs> steps away, man. <laughs> yeah. What kind of life? He that hath not, Son of God, hath not life. These things have I written unto you that 
believe in the name of the Son of God. Okay, Paul, the last one. We got to go. Sealed us, yep. Yeah, Ephesians is not the only place where sealing happens. There's a bunch of verses. That One more time, sir? Ma'am? Lady? And it says what? Oh, we want to show up to the game with no glove, huh? Uh -uh. Go ahead, Hale. That is uh, 219, Haley. Yes. Say, why do you memorize these? Help me with my life so I don't think about other stupid things that I pretty much preoccupy my time with. So go and send in all your comments on YouTube and have a good time with yourself. They won't get answered. <laughs> yeah. I don't answer those things. And you know what? You think you're going to get on there and run your mouth? I'll shut the comments off. But it's America, man. Peace, love, and First Amendment, bro. Say what you want to say. But just remember, he's right, everybody else is wrong. <laughs> but he does give you a Bible, and he gives you the Holy Ghost. He says, rightly divide that book, man. And if you run into these people, or they're in, their, in your church, they won't last long. I'm dead serious. You're out. Tribulation, going through, you're out. Tongue speaking, get out. That's mean. No, that's called a shepherd. That's called a shepherd over the, over the sheep. And he's got to do the dirty work while they're, you're over, having a good time, man. That was pretty good, wasn't it, Janet? You like, that was good, man. I practiced it all, all, all I practiced it all day. I was predestined to do that. Father, thank you again for your love, mercy, and grace. Thank you for saving our souls. It is, uh, well, <laughs> why would you come down here, Father, and talk to me? Or spend any time with my soul or shed your blood pay for my sins I, I don't get it Father but I'm glad you did I'm eternally grateful Father that you are my Father and I'm your Son but only because of Jesus Christ Father help us not to just hide these things in our mind but hide them in our heart that we might might uh, take the gospel of the grace of God freely given to whoever we run into, whoever you direct our paths to. I thank you for this congregation. I thank you for the soundness of your word, the doctrine. Father, help it to become sound doctrine in our lives. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Yeah, shut that off.